Hello and welcome to Aggregate with OR Logic. My name's Jeff. I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. Okay. The basic idea here is that we want to do some aggregation like sum, count, min, max based on OR Logic. That means we have multiple conditions and any single condition can be true for the, for the transaction to be included. This is different than AND Logic, which means that all conditions must be true to be included. Here we want to use OR logic so that if any of the conditions, one or more of the conditions are true, then the results are included. So we want to find the count, total amount, max, and order list of orders that qualify for free shipping. Okay, So an order that qualifies for free shipping is um, any of these conditions. If the order date is this date, we can type in a date. If the voucher code is this voucher code, we can type in a voucher code. And if the amount is greater than this amount, and we can type in an amount. And this is our list of orders. And so we basically want to say how many of them qualified for free shipping. Free shipping is, is, um, is part of the order if they meet any of these conditions. Not all, but any. So this is OR logic. So if we're thinking about ways that we could approach this in Excel, several ideas come to mind. One option would be something like a conditional formatting rule or rules that applies some type of formatting to these. And we could do that and it would help us identify them. But then this step becomes a little tricky because it's like, how do I count based on uh, you know, the, the cell highlighting of, of a cell, or how do I find the total amount based on um, you know, the identified uh, you know, cell formatting of a cell. So, um, so that might be one area that we could look at. Another area that comes to mind, or another approach that comes to mind would be maybe one or a series of helper columns, where we might say, you know, does, does the date equal this? Um, and, and maybe another column that says, does, does the voucher code here equal this? Um, and then maybe we use OR over here to say, you know, are any of these true? And then we could do something like a count if or count ifs function, where we could count the number of rows where the results of this helper column are true. Um, and that would be another option. Um, but generally, I like to work with the data as it comes whenever possible, rather than writing a series of helper columns. Um, another sort of you know, idea that comes to mind might be applying some filters. But generally speaking, um, once we apply a filter, like if we just grab a specific date, now I can't apply with OR logic. Um, it's like you know, I only get to apply an additional filter to these which meet this first condition, which really means that filters are like additive, which are, means they're really like AND logic. And that would be true whether I do a filter um, here on the table, or maybe I send this into a pivot table and use some slicers. It's still sort of additive. Um, so another option would be the filter function. Okay, So the way this uh, works is we do the filter function. And the first argument is the array. That is the the column or the range that has the values we want the formula to return. So in this case, we want to return, let's say, the order numbers, comma. And then the next argument is the include expression. Now, this is really cool because we can define a, a, an entire expression um, that will be evaluated to determine which of these rows to include. And we can set this up using AND or OR logic. And so we would just set up each condition enclosed in their own set of parens. So the first condition is what? The first condition is, does the date equal this date? And then close the parens. So, so far, we have a single condition enclosed in parens. Now, to do OR logic, we use the addition operator. If, on the other hand, we wanted to use AND logic, where all of the conditions must be true, then would we use the multiplication operator instead. But here we want OR logic. So then we would set up the next condition. OR does the voucher code equal this voucher code. Close the print, and then we want to do another addition operator. So it's OR. OR is the amount. Oops, and I need to set up my opening paren. There we go. Or does this, is this greater than this? Close that and then close the filter function. So before I hit enter, let's review. I'm asking the filter function 
to return a list of orders for the rows where the date is equal to C9 or where the voucher code is equal to this voucher code or where the amount is greater than this. So we hit enter and we can spot check this and make sure we look good. So 1014, it doesn't meet the date criteria, it doesn't meet the voucher condition and it doesn't meet the amount condition. So it should be excluded and we see it is excluded. The next one is 1015. 1015 has free, so it should be included, which it is. Let's look at the next one, 1018. Well, let's look at 1016. That doesn't meet any of the three conditions, so it's out. 1017 doesn't meet any conditions, it's out. 1018 does meet the voucher code condition, so it's in, which it is. Um, 1019 doesn't meet anything, so it's out. 1020 meets the greater than 100, and it's in, and it is. And we can continue looking through to verify the results, um, but I've already done that, and so these results look good. So now that we have this list of results, okay, the order numbers, now we can wrap whatever type of aggregate function around these results that we want. In the first example, we want a simple count. So I'm just gonna wrap the count function around the results of this filter function. So I hit enter, and now I get seven. And if we were to add these up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we'd see that this is the correct value. Now, we can just do the same type of thing to come up with a sum, a max, or a list. So rather than kind of write that formula by scratch, uh, from scratch again, I'm just gonna take a shortcut here and I'm just gonna copy, paste, and I'll hit enter. And now I just need to change some things around. So instead of count, I wanna do a sum. But do I wanna sum the order numbers? Maybe, but not in this case. In this case, I wanna sum the amount. So I just need to change this from order to amount. Okay, so before I hit enter, let's review. I'm asking the sum function to sum the amount, okay, uh, of the transactions that meet any of these conditions. So I hit enter and I get this result. All right, we could do the same thing with max. I'm just gonna do a copy and paste. And then I'm just gonna change this from sum to max, easy. And so the largest transaction that meets any of these conditions is 114 and it's this one right here and it's because this is greater than 100. And now let's grab the order list. So I'm just going to actually grab this because it's filter with the order number and I'm just gonna copy this, I'll come down here, equals paste and enter. So this is a list of the seven orders that meet any of these conditions and now I wanna get them in a list. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap a different aggregate function around these, um, and it is called array to text. And so before I hit enter, let's review. I'm asking the array to text function to aggregate the values returned by this filter function, which is a list of the order numbers. And what array to text does is it just puts them in a single um, list a single comma space, you know, separated list, okay? And I think we got it. But as you can see, the base function here for all of this stuff was the filter function. And then we just applied whatever aggregate function around the results um, that we wanted to, depending on what we're trying to, to return, okay? But it all comes down to being able to use this filter function with or logic, which is defined through the addition operator. Cool? <laughs> okay, good. Hey, hopefully it helped. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. This video is a production of Excel University. 